mic, camera, action. Here's the deal. Don't ask me any questions because I'm only going to tell you what I want to tell you. The man who calls himself Rodrigo took something from me. It's in business with three other men. They're here for a robbery and they're going to use their house to lay low when they're done. So... You let them steal something. You steal it from them. I help you. And I get a commission. You're gonna kill them, aren't you? I never said that, Leslie. You did. Civilized people need to follow rules. I'm just gonna put things right. Welcome back to the Filmography, the show dedicated to watching every credited film from an actor's complete back catalogue, from past debut through to present day, in chronological order. Each episode, I'm joined by an esteemed guest to watch and discuss the next entry from the Focus Filmography, and consider how it ranks amidst their career, and whether we can trace any typecasting trends or topic traits or theatrical ticks. For episode 30, in a late-in-the-day substitution, I'm joined by man of many hats, Tony Farina, to discuss the 30th big screen appearance of the Stath in the fifth adaptation of Richard Stark's Parker character, but the first to bear his name. We watch, you listen, and hopefully watch along too. So, Tony, thank you so much for jumping in and returning to the show. Um, it's going to be an interesting one, I think, because you are a literary man. I am. This is a literary adaptation. It is, of a series I've not read, but have wanted to read for years. Yeah. And so... I will plan on it. I want to mm. read them and I'm going to entice you. I'm going to say to you, we'll start <laughs> a book club of two where we read them all. There's 24 books. Richard Stark, his real name is Robert Wesley. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But um, he's actually, he wrote the screenplay to one of my favorite movies that's really a bit uncomfortable to watch, but a super great Grifters with Q Jack and Angelica Houston. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. wrote that. Oh, okay. Yeah, as as Westlake, as his real name. He like yeah. wrote the screenplay. It's not based on anything. He just wrote the screenplay. Uh, and that's it's been a, a long time since I've classic. seen it. But yeah, that's, that's a, good a great one. Great I owned movie, it on yeah. VHS. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm old and I love that movie. It's one of I mean, it's one of Annette Benning, right? Yeah. Oh man, so good. Anyway, um so yeah, I've never read them, but I've read obviously Robert Parker's books. I've just read all of the um all of the Philip Marlowe books. And mm. so it's like, you know, I really enjoyed the noir. You just read all of the Alex Cross books. So it seems yep. like Parker is, is a sweet spot for both of us anyway. And it's weird. I've never read them. And have you ever read them? I haven't, no. And there was obviously the comic series that Darwin Cook produced mm. as well. So he I've not, I've not to... read those. And I'm, yeah. No. So, and, and we are doing our own Every Baker and Sean Phillips back to the bibliography of right. comics. So yeah, it does feel like a weird gap we both have in our, for being oh, such industry. a big 24 books, that's no joke. Yeah. I mean, it's not like he did three and they're like, yeah, nobody's sure, buying yeah. these. 24. You know, I mean, like, and they're not, they're not hard to read. And it's funny. Um I, I'm gonna say this out and I mean I, I don't watch his new movies, and we can talk about why or why not. But my uh, until I knew all the bad stuff about Mel Gibson, my favorite movie was always payback. That was my mm-hmm. favorite Mel Gibson movie. And it, it was Porter. You yeah. mentioned how they didn't bear his name. And again, still loved that movie. It's my favorite Mel Gibson movie. Four years, and it was like, hmm, didn't didn't inspire me to read the book then either. Mm. Oddly enough, and then um, seeing this in 2013, I can ex- we'll talk about why that didn't inspire mm. me necessarily to read the books. But I also know that Shane Black has teased for years that he and Robert Downey Jr. are going to do it. But although. The latest news is that it's going to be Marky Mark instead of Robert Downey Jr., which oh, I'm okay. Which 
may just mean that because you know he's got his own production company and he he did the Spencer. Yes. Spencer Confidential, which I didn't watch. It's not based on one of the Robert Parker things, but obviously Mark wants to do that. Like he wants to, yeah. you know, he's got kids and stuff. And I think, you know, it's just easier to like do a series, just have a thing. You know, he likes to control his own, the movies that he makes and he's got his own production company. So maybe he'd get the money to get it made. Not that Robert Downey Jr. couldn't just write a check, but for whatever yeah, reason, sure. it wasn't getting made. So maybe making this, but I do like the way that Robert read Shane Black's lines. I'll be interested yes. to know if Marky Mark can pull it off. But um, so what was your reason for not reading it? I mean, again, it seems like a sweet spot for you. Yeah. Park, are they not accessible over there? Or? They're not that accessible. So yeah, when we first were discussing about this being a new little project for us, I was looking around and they're not off the shelf novels here. Like my library, which I read, I read a lot of the Pattersons through. I know he's the like the second best selling author in the world, but um Right. <laughs> he's he you better have those. Yeah. Obviously they've got those there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um I think the Parker books they've got like two, two of the oh, wow. series. Like looking on Audible, there's not that many on there either. So um yes, it might just be a it, I don't think it'll be a quick project. Because I'm gonna all have to the audio books are or... on Hoopla Digital, but the oh, okay. but the ebooks aren't. Like I think you have like five of the ebooks, but all of the audiobooks. So I'm wondering if it's a matter of um publication and like people bought the rights to make the audiobooks and so mm. those became easier, easily accessible because they're new productions. Yeah, that, that happens sometimes. Somebody buys the rights to an audiobook to make the audiobook, and then they can it's a different publishing stream than him. But like in general. Like, but it's not like that people read noir there, right? I mean, it's oh, not of like course, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you write it, so yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm excited. I mean, I definitely want to do it. So we'll 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 decide if we share. But you and I will definitely talk as we read mm. each one to be like, hey, Parker, is this any good? And we could be wrong. We could get through two and be like, oh, that would do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I watched. Well, nearly in the end. So there's been six adaptations of his books, like officially, and I watched five of the six. the The last one was very hard to get hold of, um, and there was just like one dodgy streaming website that was showing it, and I don't like to use those really if I can avoid them. Um, so, I guess you know, even like with that broad range of twenty four books, and knowing there's only been six adaptations, and I don't know if any of them ever really done big business i think payback did pretty well but and that one that one there, i think that one was based on the hunter and i think three yeah. of them have been that one that was just yeah. the first one the... so it's funny of the of the adaptations three of them are trying to do the same one this one yeah. didn't this one chose to do a different one yeah flash fire i think it is yeah it? yeah which i don't think i really even thought about till after i'd watched the film and was yeah. looking up about it but so i don't know it just seems to be more of a niche area doesn't it and yeah that's okay I, you know we both like yeah. niche things but we definitely do it'll be interesting i do really want to start it and see but I, it's just not something that ever seems to have caught fire that that much i suppose i guess he's sold enough that he keeps writing more books but yeah. i think there was like an extended period wasn't there like 15 17 years or something i read i think when he wasn't even writing any parker books he just had enough and he was like i'll come back to this when i feel like it because he used to sit um write them in a very like set way didn't he it'd be like the the, the opening act so like part one would be the robbery if you like or whatever it might be yeah it would be a flashback to the setup of the robbery and then it would be the uh, nice after and i think every book follows that structure okay so perhaps he just got a bit bored with the structure or i don't know yeah i get that though i mean you know and that's and that is sometimes the you know, the success breeds breeds that. It can success can breed can breed complacency, as you've talked about. James Patterson, he doesn't yeah. write any of his own books anymore. He just plots them and then hands them off to somebody. And I don't know the the plotting is people can't see me do air quotes. I don't even know how much of that is it's like. And again, as somebody who writes, you know, who's who's taking Jane Austen's ideas and making them my own. I mean, there's only a handful of ideas anyway. And again, sure. I'm interested. The reason I'm interested in reading the Parker books, having read the Marlowe books and having read Robert Parker Spencer series, which, you know, Robert Parker has a had a PhD in English in literature based on studying noir, you mm -hmm, know, studying mm -hmm. Dashiell Hammett and stud studying mm -hmm. um, 
uh, Mickey Spillane and like all of, you know, and then, and then he actually ended up writing some Marlowe books later um, in, in, you know, as like some finished manuscripts that were un, that were unfinished. Hmm. He was brought in to, to clean the Poodle Springs in particular. Um, so, you know, it's interesting, you know, it's, it's a real literary genre. And Scott and I were talking about noir and detective fiction as a genre and does it get the love it deserves or whatever. And there's like this weird thing, the difference between like crime fiction, like Patterson doesn't really mm. write. He doesn't, they don't classify it as detective fiction. They don't, they classify it as crime fiction and for whatever. So you call it crime fiction, bestseller, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Stuart Woods and James Patterson and all these people, but you call it detective fiction. And then it's like a weird noir thing and it's not real writing. Mm-hmm. Then it's like, and it's funny to me because, you know, you think of like, um, this, you know, the stuff that we like is more the noir stuff. It's, mm-hmm. I think it's more detective than it is crime. Yeah. But although this is Parker's a bad guy. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, the character of Parker is a bad guy. The character Jason Satham plays called Parker in this movie yeah. is not really. And I think well, that's, but that's the whole thing. Is that's that a bit of a problem, I think. Having yeah. watched all the other versions recently, this yeah. is the one which has been most changed to fit the persona of the actor, which I've spoken about quite a few times on these shows where they've altered things to fit the Jason Statham-ness. Yeah. And that's fine. That's not a problem. And I think it works here. I think he's actually very good in the role i think it suits, he's having fun suits what he can do but yeah. it's not it's ironic that this is the one called parker because it's, it's the, the furthest away yeah absolutely <laughs> compared to other versions and again coming from a place where i've not read the book yeah. i understand the books to be and for to know that payback and, and point blank and those uh, are the two i've seen the two most famous ones are the yeah, close, yeah. closer to the character this couldn't be further from it yeah because i think point blank is walker right and then okay Payback yeah is porter yeah i wrote them all down actually yeah. yeah and then okay the split is mclean what yeah really and the outfit is macklin and then huh. the one i haven't seen is um sleigh ground which is a fantastic title and the character is called stone in that Nice sleigh ground. Yeah. Wow. I love that. I want yeah. to see that. Um, Spider Dan, find it. He'll know where it is. Well, he did so, find me. He's he's the man because he's the man I go to when I can't find it. Oh, so and shout out to you, Spider Dan. Thank you. That was he, the dodgy place he, that you didn't want to watch. Gotcha. He found okay. me the one so he did it. Thank you, sir. Bow to the Dan. He did do it. Yeah. Um, he's the man that knows. He's got his special ways. Yeah. I, I, it is it is amazing. That's his superpower. He's like my little dealer when I can't find things to watch. <laughs> I just reach out and yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He, and he gives it away for free. That's the thing about Spider Man. Yeah, he doesn't make it, but he is definitely the best drug dealer because he's not out to make money. He's just like, here's the drugs. Yeah, yeah. That's fun. That's good to know. Yeah, I, I Slate Ground is a great title. <laughs> yeah, I I want to see that. And that's that's taken directly from a book title as well. That is the title. Oh, nice. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that'll be fun. Yeah. Like I said, other than knowing that they exist and knowing that Richard Stark was a pseudonym. But again, it comes back to that whole idea of this kind of noir crime, detective fiction, whatever you want to call it, um, doesn't get the love that it should. It, it, it's 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 debased. And even I, I mean, even if you do say it's crime fiction and you think of it like like uh, um Ivanovich or or Stuart Woods or the you know Harlan Coben or any of those people who do this for a living who who write that kind of stuff. Writing a book is hard, mm. as you know. And I don't care what kind of book it is. I don't care if it's formulaic, or whatever. You gotta sit and you gotta do it and you gotta write it and you gotta grind it out. And the reason that these books, the reason that Alex Cross books, which you just went through that process, 32 Alex Cross books, is because the character is interesting you have to make mm-hmm. a good character it can't be the parker robert parker's spencer books it's because those characters are like real people to me when he died i was so sad because it was like those people were like my friends mm. and i think that's what it's interesting what you say and when we when we read the books we'll we'll, we'll be able to then you know kind of discuss the, the film adaptations of him because what makes him appealing is that is that you know he's is he a, is he a villain is he an anti-hero Mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. it a crime book and it's like oh it's just that well you know just that elmore leonard mm. we can't stand elmore leonard because he he like most detective fiction crime fiction there's too many saids 
right at the end of every (laughs) sentence and it's even when it's a question it'll still say said that is one thing that leonard does he'll be like what'd you have for dinner he said no he asked he asked she just wants him to say (laughs) she asked at the beginning of the sentence but but again it's a formula right it's the detective it's the way mickey spillane did it it's the way dashiell hammond did it. it's the way that it's done so that's the way that they do it because it's the formula for writing those kinds of stories but it drives her crazy like she loved Justified, but she could not read the book. She was like, <laughs> I cannot get through it because it's like, it just feels like she's on a, in a car that stopped the concerning. But a bit, again, Elmer Leonard, towards the end of his life, he finally won a writing award. And in the present, in the speech, he said, I didn't think I'd ever get an award. I'm not an award. I don't write books that get awards. And that's silly. Mm, mm. You know, so I don't know. He, he's the right author to pick out here, though, because I feel like, Parker is more of an Elmore Leonard adaptation, ironically. Yeah. Like this Jason Statham's Parker feels very influenced by like Jackie Brown and Tarantino or by yeah. Soda Soda Bag and Ocean's Eleven vibes I got from this as well. Which mm. makes sense. 2013 that is coming out around that time. It's a decade after those two movies, but it makes sense that uh, Taylor Hackford, the director of this, is is more in that world than he is in even further back the payback world or even even further back the point blank world it has that kind of like attempt to try and kind of have a swagger and a coolness to it this that i think perhaps was a little bit ill-fitting for what i on this watch what i wanted from it because i had just gone through all the parker movies and that they they are much more hard-boiled even the ones which you never really heard of before like i'd never heard of the outfit or the split Mm. split is almost like kind of a black exploitation oh, version of the nice. character i'm down for that and the outfit is robert duval so it's very oh, like wow every wow. very every man like kind of character um so just sort of godfathery era robert duval i would say so you know the hair's definitely going the he's, there's yeah. a, bit, a bit of a belly there he's not you know, jason satham if you know what i mean so i do know what you mean yeah, yeah and i'm not sure this ad- adaptation because I think this is after Wesaker died, right? So that's how it got yeah. the title Parker because his wife had given allowed the it. permission, allowed it. So yeah, it's interesting that it, it feels the furthest away. It feels almost like an adaptation of a different writer. Yeah, well, that's funny too because well, and that's what adaptations are, right? You're yeah, supposed sure. to you're you know, and, um, that is a good point. But you know, like Elmore Leonard dislikes almost every one of the adaptations <laughs> except for justified and get shorty he hated pretty much like he loved get shorty so much that he wrote the sequel be cool like yeah. there was no sequel that book was written because he loved the movie so much he was like wow somebody got it um i believe when the big bounce came out he said the big bounce is the worst adaptation of a elmore leonard book since the last time they tried to write the big bounce <laughs> that was what he said he hated but he ca- happily cashed the checks um, they couldn't always figure it out, but then when he saw Justified, he he wrote another book, same thing. So good that he wrote another Raylan book and actually had Timothy Oliphant on the cover. Um, yeah. Because I do think, and that's what it is, is what those do right, what Be Cool or what um, Get Shorty and Justified do right with the adaptations of those books is get the, get the characterization out of sight, mm. right? Yeah. Jennifer Lopez's finest performance. I don't mm. think she's very good. I don't think she's very good in this. Agreed. But it, she's that's exceptional. And again, it's the director, it's her co-star. Mm-hmm. That's what that was. I mean, she's good. You know, she's, I mean, my Karen Cisco is still Carla, but I also mm. understand. I understand. I mean, give me more Karen Cisco. I love that character. And more, give me more Jack Foley. I love that character. Like, mm. But that's just it. Those characters are so good right um that it that it works and so and maybe that's it maybe like you said the character of parker is so good but they were like well people they want to love jason statham Mm. you know he hadn't done wrath of man yet you know i mean that's Mm -hmm. he hadn't played that dark of a character yet like he's not been so bad Mm. You know, so like you said, did it was it him? Was they like was that part of the agreement to get him to do it? I don't know. It, it's it's fascinating to find out. And um, I mean, I did in, again. I enjoyed his performance. I think, mm-hmm. I think the the people he's up against, yeah, 
mixed mixed casting. I I do like Michael Chiklis. I do yeah. think he plays a good bad guy. He was definitely channeling the shield. You know, he was like mm, Mackey, playing that yeah. guy, right? You know, and I like him. I'm on record as liking him as the thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think he was well cast. I don't know that all the members of the group. Was... <laughs> no, I agree. Are they side sidebar? Speaking of the thing, yeah. You know, if we need a new one, Jason Statham's right there. That's an excellent point. <laughs> but would he do it? Yeah, I don't think so. No, he's he's been very vocal in that he's not interested in. He, he doesn't disparage, but yeah. he is not interested in, as he says, putting on any tights for those types of movies. He wouldn't have to wear tights for the thing, obviously. But um, no, no, yeah. <laughs> no, it's interesting. I think it's something I've been talking about recently. This is a phase, I think, for the Stath where like scripts or or like adaptations are being re- are being not retrofitted they're being altered to fit his on-screen persona so scott and i discussed this when we did blitz right which was an, another adaptation of a book where we were saying that actually it needed to be more kind of almost like a dirty harry style so actually the station now would be better for that one yeah absolutely which is so- what i love about wildcard yeah, absolutely. Right, and I know that movie wasn't a hit, but it's one of my favorite uh, favorites of his because older state and like you see the direct line from Wild Card to Wrath of Man. Yeah, like oh, okay, we we see who we see how this is getting to there. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, think, I do think that's what's happening here. So th- this script, hundred percent has been altered to fit, as you said, his charisma, yeah. his persona. People love the state, so we need to love the character of Parker. And I think, actually, I would have preferred it to have seen him be that hard-nosed bastard, be that guy who does whatever it takes and doesn't care who it affects. It's much more interesting than the kind of halfway guy we get here that we're just used to seeing in in, in a lot of movies and not just Stath movies and a lot of these kind of action thriller crime revenge so it's you, just a bit you even said this is the safe part of this and i know the movie yeah. safe was in this part but it's also like what's the formula how much yeah. are you gonna pay me i assume he got five million for this right i guess yeah 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 right wouldn't you think i mean this time of his career with this kind of budget yeah 35 million makes it yeah sounds about right and maybe he didn't get a. That's what I look at this, and I'm like, I look at it. You look at those. You look at the supporting actors. And again, anytime you give me Bobby Cannavale, he's not doing much, but I love him. I'm always happy to see him show up. They, they, you know, again, was he just like he owed Taylor? Some, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. why does he show up? Like that could have been anybody. Like it didn't have to be him. Yeah. But, but like I feel like you spent the money on Statham and Lopez. Yeah. And then you're like, who are some good TV actors? Uh huh. Uh-huh. You know, and then Patty Lapone for no reason. Like, what? Yeah. I mean, Broadway legend is in this movie. I don't understand, but it definitely feels like because the budget is low. Like, there's, it's, there's all, it's a very confined set. So, um, yeah, I definitely feel like th- th- this would, and who knows what his agents were up to, right? It's funny though. I didn't think about it until you told me. And I don't know if it's just then like you said it. So now it's, you planted the seed, <laughs> you inceptioned me by saying the safe part of his career. But as I'm looking at what he's doing, you're totally right. And it's, it's, and it's almost like when he moves out of this, he's moving away. He's moving. Not everything is getting released in the box office. Some are starting to go to VOD or straight to DVD or straight to wherever. Yeah. Or they're limited release like wild card. And there's a hand, even killer elite that didn't get a, yeah. I don't think that got a theatrical release, which I'm sure at the time though, they were like, look at this cast. How does this not get a theatrical? Like it should have, Yeah, but it didn't. And so I think that's it. It's like, you're saying, well, what is the thing? How do we get you? How do you get in Liam Neeson's career? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And I know this is right at the part where that part of Liam Neeson's career is taking off is during this. So I also feel like there's that, um, the taken mm. thing. Like there's a, um, what do we need to get an action movie in the theater? What is it going to have to have? Check. That's this movie is very much. There was a bunch of boxes. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. they were Definitely. like, can we get Jennifer Lopez in her underwear in one scene? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's going to get it in the theater, right? I mean, I hate to say it, but that scene. That's no, true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's totally unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I don't know where no. I was going, but I but now no, that you, you said it, now every time I listen and I'm thinking and I'm looking at the movies you're doing, I'm like, it's totally true. So was that his choice, or was that 
the choice, like that's his team's choice. They're like, look, we can mm. get you five. You can make twenty million dollars this year by making four of the same movie. Yeah, and I think you do get these batches where for him, where films all come out in this little swathe of. I think it's only a couple a year here at this point, but you know, sometimes you get up to four, such as twenty twenty three. So weird. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I think it's the ones where there's like. When there's no CGI, there's nothing. It's like all practical yeah. effects and low budget. So you can get four. Like the reason you can get, you know, um, four in a year is when they're like, there's nothing happening. Like again, wild card spy furious seven are all in a year, right? Coming up. Well, only one of those has any special effects and he's, and I've not seen the furious movies, but I don't, so I don't know when he shows up in them. Um, but that probably was filmed two years before. Whereas in 2014, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's only one, Expendables 3. So it's like, so he's probably filming Furious then, and it takes two years. So he can go do two other movies that have no special effects in yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. You know, Melissa McCarthy doesn't need special effects to fall down. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so that is such a good point, though. Yeah, because you're looking at, yeah, this this year, Parker, Redemption is next, Furious 6. Home home front. Mm. I actually kind of liked home front. Yeah, with James Franco. Yeah, yeah. I thought that, but again, that was like a six dollar budget. But see, yeah. to me, that was one where he did something different. That yeah. one isn't safe. Yeah. But Parker is kind of at the end of, like you said, mechanic, blitz, killer elite, safe, expendables two, Parker Redemption. Wow. See? So it's, it's all just yeah. That's and there's not... nothing wrong with any of them. But right. it's all just like you you know what you're going to get and you watch it and you get what you thought you were going to get. So you can't help but feel a little bit like, Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's how I sort of been feeling this in this era. I've been enjoying it all. There's not anything I would say that is actively bad. And you know, he has had some actively bad movies, but um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a period of just kind of, yeah, he's all right. Yeah, that's true. And this one, same, this is all right. <laughs> this it's is funny. all right. I watched, I watched it on Pluto TV, which is a mm, thing mm. in America that yeah, we've got it here too. Junk. Oh, do you? I love mm. it. Right? It's just garbage. Um, but the best thing about it is you turn it on and it just starts playing. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, it yeah. doesn't give you a choice, which I love about that. But they have a Mystery Science Theater three thousand and Rift Cracks channel on oh, there. So at okay. any given time, if you've got twenty minutes to kill, you just turn it on. But the commercials always break in such a weird spot. But the cover of the poster is him with the gun and Lopez's face on his jacket, mm -hmm. which, okay. And this in the, in the uh, Pluto, the whole thing is every time they go to add and the ad in the thing, when you click on it is the picture of them close with him in the cowboy hat. Uh, they yeah, were yeah, really yeah. trying to sell Jennifer Lopez and Jason Statham were going to have sexy time. And that was yeah. never going to happen in this. No, it's interesting because it's, it's not ever a, uh, an option is it i mean her character of leslie wants it yeah very deliberately wants it there's a scene when he walks away to get in his car when he's got the cowboy hat she's on she's watching got, his ass yeah. yeah very like jean claude van damme like whoa look at those buns yeah yeah they, i mean they look good to be fair and it's <laughs> like um like linen trousers yeah you can see why she was looking but um so at least there's some equal opportunities kind of objectification in this movie to an extent yeah but the jailer stuff is a bit beyond yeah there's a scene when he we haven't really talked about the film yet, have we? It's no, a scene sorry. where he's like kind of frisking her, isn't he, to make sure she's not wearing a Y when they yeah. first start to team up. And he insists she takes her clothes off. It's a funny scene, I think, because I understand why it's there. And, you know, Jennifer Lopez is a very attractive woman. I get it. I I'm watching the scene and I'm judging it, but at the same time I'm thinking like, oh, okay, I get it. Um, yeah. But it, it, it also comes up, I think, off the back of that, just shortly after, she has like a big confessional moment. Yeah, like things that happened to me when I was younger, and like it's really off kilter with the rest of the movie. The rest of the movie is kind of light and carefree, and then we get this weird stripping scene. Didn't like, didn't need, didn't and need, and I know it's like it's, confessional scene. It's all right. over the place. The only reason I feel like okay, I hear that, and this is the thought was the line in the confessional scene is I'm pushing forty, which she was. Yes, and I also feel like. That was drink her. too much wine and that like cat says right but there's no also, wine belly nope none at all <laughs> zero and i but but is that like a thing of and that has always been a thing jennifer has done if she is you know she's happy to show her 
you know, she, like you said, she has a no nudity clause, we assume, but she is always happy to show a lot of skin. She does it in her performances. She does it in her videos. It's a thing that yeah. she does. And again, I think that whole idea of pushing 40, because there is a thing for women of a certain age where you get to a role. Like I remember I was read, I read Judy Greer's. I know I'd be shocked. I read Judy Greer's book. <laughs> Um, it's called I Don't Know What You Know Me From, which is a perfect title. That's cool. Because can you imagine how many times people walk up to her and be like, what do I oh, know? Oh, you, you uh, uh, yeah. Oh, you're Hope Davis. I, no, yeah, I'm not. No. no. I'm not. <laughs> Actually, I, she, the answer she needs to give to that is always 13 going on 30. Right. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's seen that. So yeah. if she just says that, the people will be like, oh, and that will be the end of it. Right. If she just says that. But anyway, I'm a big Judy Griffin, as you know. But anyway, in there. She talked about when she hit 40, she had to start transitioning into mom roles. Right. Yeah. Okay. Even, I mean, she has stepchildren. She has not given birth. She doesn't have any children of her own birth children. She has children. They're her children. She loves them and all, but she didn't go she didn't go through pregnancy or whatever. They were just like, okay, this is the time. Her agent's like, you got to start transitioning to mother roles because yeah. you're 40. So like, that's a very specific thing that happens. So I almost feel like. Interesting. Yeah. She took this role. She Jennifer Lopez doesn't need to do anything she doesn't want to do. No. Right? She's always in control of what she's doing. Her name is above the title, too, in mm -hmm. this movie. And she, it's called Parker, but Jennifer Lopez is second billing above the title. Mm -hmm. That's who she is. That's she can do whatever she wants to do whenever she wants to do it. And so it was it's a choice to go into acting was a choice that she wanted to make. So so I still feel like that moment, this is just me reading it. She read the script and said, oh, I'm going to, I know that's in there. It's really gross and objectifying, but I'm going to do it because of that confessional mm. scene. And maybe she wanted that in there to like work as some sort of juxtaposition to that or a comment on, mm. I can be 40 and still look like this. And I don't have to transition into, and she was a mom at this point in time. Mm. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But it's like, I just think. I'm 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 just giving it credit because while I don't think she's a very good actor and I'm not even that big of a fan of her singing, she is savvy and very smart. Yeah, as a businesswoman, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I I think she is more talented than we get to see often enough, which I think is a shame. I think she became a brand, didn't she? Yes. You no. Know, when she was Jennifer, Jennifer Lopez. Yeah. Right. When when she was in Out of Sight, and when she's in another movie called U Turn, I don't know if you've seen that with Sean yeah. Penn. She's fantastic that, at that as this like I love that movie. Femme fatale. That tetris. is really hard to watch. That's Nick Nolte yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. That's a tough one. Honestly, that scene with Claire Danes in uh, River Phoenix and that, mm. um, when they're in the, you know, isn't it make you sad they don't make Patsy Klein records anymore? <laughs> He's like, well, she's dead. <laughs> oh, I love that. I. Yes, I saw you turn to the theater. It was just me. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, but that that era, she was. That a was a great actress. movie. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, she became J Lo. She became Jenny from the Block. So I think something's just yeah. was taken away a little bit. Unfortunately, she never managed to quite get that spark back. And I don't think she's bad here. I just don't know why she would want this role. I can't see what's in it for her because she either needs to be playing it as like the every woman like which they're pretending she's that yeah but then she strips off and looks like jennifer lopez so right it, it, it's neither <laughs> one thing or the other unfortunately right. do you know what i mean it That's, needed to be like it needed to yeah. be mumsy or it needed to be sexy jennifer lopez and they went for a bit of both and it doesn't quite work so i and she doesn't really do anything she sits in a car with jason statham she sits in an office and then she's a damsel in distress at the end. She has oh. one moment where she kind of she she steps up and joins in to help him. And we, we need to talk about that final scene because I think there are some interesting decisions made there. But yeah, I can't see what she thought was what it was going to do for her career. This rock, I just can't. I don't. I don't know why she did it. Well, I'm looking. I'm so I pulled up her internet movie database. So she had a movie come out in 2010 called The Backup Plan. With right. Alex O'Laughlin, whatever. Um, she's sounds top like billing. some sort of rom com spam thing, right? Yeah, yep, yeah, whatever. And then she cool. did a bunch of, then she put out an album. So she did that for a few years. And then she did What to Expect When You're Expecting, which was like a group, which was more of a. Um, yeah, I've not seen a, it, but crap. Yeah, but you know, it wasn't, there was no star, it was yeah, an ensemble. Yeah, yeah. 
and then music, 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 and then this. So there's only like really one movie where she's the star. Yeah. And then, and so, but even when you go back from 2010 and that movie, I didn't even know existed. And I'm just looking back, looking back, looking back, Border Town, 2007. So maybe it was just like, I get to be in a Statham movie. Like it was yeah. a way to peep, remind people she was there. Yeah, I'm an actress too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't understand it either. I'm with you. I don't know what she's doing in here. And and if it's like once they made the decision, the right decision, that they weren't going to be together because he's married to Claire and he loves Claire and that's yeah. that. And even though he says to Claire repeatedly. Like, if you want to get out, I understand. Right. And of course, she doesn't. I and, I, and, I, and I like that. Yeah, their relationship's I, you know, really well handled, I think. I really do, too. I like it. And I think my I'm Nick Nolte playing Nick Nolte. Um, yeah. When he's like, oh, I'm jealous he called you first. And that yeah. was such a well-written line, though, because that says everything about their relationship with Claire. And, and I really I really did like, I liked Claire. I liked that. I do. So it's like- He had good agency. Know, yeah. 100%. So we know that it's not going to happen. Like you said, J-Lo wants it to happen, but they still yeah. don't have that. They don't have chemistry. Yeah. And and it and none at all. And it's like, and again, we know he can. Like, yeah, yeah. Like- I still say like he and Melissa McCarthy crackle and spy like they are so having so much fun and they are so great together. So we know he can have chemistry with men or women or anybody. Yeah. We've seen him do it. Oh, he and yeah. Claire in this movie have chemistry. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I don't get what's happening. And if it was the intentional thing and they were like, they're so good as actors that they were playing it cold. But it doesn't seem that way. Nah. Did they dislike each other? I don't know. I don't know what she's doing in it either. No, it's weird. I don't know it? what's happening. Yeah. I don't know. Except somebody said, Hey, we're filming in Miami. You live there. You don't have to go. Yeah. You can stay at home. I mean, seriously, that could be really appealing. Like yeah, it's a movie. She's it's gonna be a state of the movie. It's gonna be in the theaters. It's gonna get her name above the title, even though she can't be first billing. It's not a romantic comedy. So she doesn't that's different for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this point, she was in the and then, you know, when she comes back after this, her next few movies, The Boy Next Door, where she bangs a kid, and then something <laughs> with her in um, Lila and Eve with, um, uh, yeah, exactly, right, with Viola Davis. Yeah, I can't say So I've it's definitely not career. a rom-com. Yeah, so it's like she's trying to make a turn. And then she did that show with Ray Liotta for a while, right, too. So she's trying to make a turn into like a different kind of shades of blue was the series so she's right. trying to make a turn into a dip so maybe that's it it's like if yeah, i show yeah. i can do this i can do action or i could do drama because she hadn't really done that up to this point although you turn she did yeah she but did. Yeah. but like you said perfectly she walked away from those roles out of sight and while out of sight is like this it's not no you know that's better yes outside it's a, a pretty much perfect movie i would say it's very good. It's very, very good. It's it's probably the best film adaptation of Elmore. And I know how you feel about Jackie Brown. And I feel differently about it. But oh, but I, I think Outside's the better movie than Jackie Brown. Yeah. Yeah. And 100%. it's in the same universe. Yeah. Because of uh, Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Yeah. 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 And I mean, the character is in both books. You yeah. know, so I just thought that was really funny that they, that they, they did it. it. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah, I don't know. That's a that's a great point. But yeah, the, so we didn't. So we are an hour in and we haven't talked. The movie <laughs> is a revenge. Is it revenge? It is must it be, mustn't it? Yeah. Or settling. What is it? I mean, what is the movie about? Is and it that's about... why it's a bit weird, isn't it? That's why it feels like it's the hunter as you start watching it. Yeah. But it's not. But does that mean all Parker books do this? All Parker books are Parker's <laughs> on a mission. He gets betrayed and he has to. I'm not sure because that's yeah. We'll find you might out. not get through 23, 24 books of him. Yeah, right. That happening every time. But that's yeah, so a great point because the movie starts the same as the hunter does, isn't it? He's on a um, what would you what you call? It? He's on a heist, I suppose. Really, yeah. Is that a fair? Which is a yeah. bit weird. Um, no, but... no, county fairs, state fairs are big business in the United States. Okay, that's, fair that enough. totally checked out to me when they were like a million dollars were coming through there. Nope, I believe it. It's is crazy. It... The, everybody in America, if you want to see everybody in your town, there's two places yeah. you go: Walmart and the fair. Okay, all right. Everybody goes to both. It's there's not it's not discerning. It's a it's a relatively inexpensive way for you and your family to go do something. And right. there is weird shit like this. There's a tractor pull. There's a band. Okay. Like yeah. there's gonna be like 
somebody's on the fair circuit. So like either on the way up or on the way down, people play fairs. So right. like, but then there's country, country singers. They like, even no matter how big they are, they come and play like fairs. So it, I know yeah. it doesn't make a lot of sense, but this, that to me, I totally checked out. It's Ohio. Uh, that's interesting. Yep. Yeah. 100%. So because yeah. The, the outfit, one of the other adaptations that I watched does a very similar like score, mm. but at, uh, American football stadium oh okay totally it sure. made me think of uh, the outfit actually i thought was probably quite a big influence on ben affleck's adaptation of the town really another wonderful heist movie and i read the book that was based on by lahane no Dennis that one Lahane. isn't no the, the town oh, that's gone baby on... gone yeah, yeah it was um it was there when it's gone sorry no it's fine it'll maybe it'll come back to me chuck nixon chuck nixon is that a name i think okay. so um Anyway, I thought the outfit felt like it was an influence on the town because it is that kind of realistic heist. Mm. I and mean, this one was set at, at like I say, at an American football match. I think um, the town is obviously baseball. But here, yeah, Chuck the county. Hogan. Chuck Hogan, thank you. Um, yeah, here it's a county fair, isn't it? And they do a yeah. heist. And then yeah. after the heist, Parker naturally gets betrayed by his crew. And as you said, Nick Nolte set him up with it. But he, even when he's setting him up to do the heist, he's a bit like, I know this one guy, but only a little bit. I don't know the rest of his crew. And Parker wasn't sure. But because the score was 250 grand each, he decided to go for it, didn't he? So greed, yeah. actually get that message of like, you know, the greed is greed is not good. Where greed is not good. Which again, that's the point of that movie that people got wrong. People Absolutely. Who, people, yeah. who, people who've watched Wall Street the wrong way for a long time are also the people who watch The Matrix the wrong way. It's all the same people. Yeah. So, um, no, it's true. I don't think Nick Nolte, I mean, he's a bad guy. Yeah. And Claire knows what they do. Like, he, he does. Meets Claire, yeah, that's interesting. He meets Claire because he works for him. Like, he's a guy yeah. who knows her dad, who's a crime guy, and they're all just what it is. This is what we do. But again, yeah. they don't, the big thing is they don't kill people. No, they, so it's the, very much, I've the, got a code, yes. I've got a code of, I'm going to rob, I'm going to steal, I'm going to do, but like, you're insured. Yes. Right? That's the yeah, whole yeah. thing. It's very much yeah. like taking it back. And the other movie that he did, the, um, have we, have you done this one already with the, with the bank robbery? Yeah, the bank and job. The, yeah. Not the, yeah, yeah, the bank job. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That one we've done already. That one's been done. That one's been done. Yeah, 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 yeah. So did we do that one together? Did we watch Me and Blake that, did, did that actually? Funny you, all right, okay. But I, I, was, I remember watching the bank job. You did watch thinking, it, yeah. No, no, no. It wasn't the bank job. It's not that one because the bank job's very good. It's the one that's bad. Then it's like, um, he's he's a good guy, bad guy. The bank job is the is the English one. Yeah, yeah. There's the other one where it's like a big twisty turny thing at the end, oh, and who's revolver? Revolver. The Guy Ritchie movie. That one's not good. That one's shit. It's not even <laughs> not good. Okay. That one's bad. <laughs> I did anyway. that with Rhea, I think. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But I, I'm watching along, so like they're all starting to blur a little. Yeah, fair but, enough. But anyway, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Um, In all of them, in that yeah. one too, it's always like the, the bad guys always say when they're robbing the bank, it's not your money. Don't worry. Don't play. Don't be a hero. So it's in one of the movies. Somebody has said that out loud, whether it's yeah. Statham has said it out loud or somebody said it out loud. So that is like an easy thing to do. And it's such an interesting, the reason I bring it up, sorry, I got lost in revolver in the bank job. <laughs> I, did, I loved the bank job. I actually thought the yeah. bank job was spectacular. Um, the thing that, the thing that you get lost in is that is such a commentary. Like you're saying greed isn't good, but their whole saying is like, we just want our fair share. We were talking off air of like, we do work like we do good work and we would love to be compensated as well for the work that we do, but we're not. And that's frustrating when you, when you have daydreams of winning the lottery, which we both <laughs> have and everybody does, it's not, and it's because you don't want to do this. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. the reason these movies and these stories keep being told about these Robin hood anti-hero types is because even though Parker's not a Robin hood, He's still like saying, well, I'm going to take what's mine because somebody's screwed me at some point in time. Yeah. Somebody's always getting screwed. Yes, there is. They do take two great pains in this movie to kind of say <laughs> only from a certain type of people and only if you're insured and only. And, right. And don't kill. And Yeah. 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 Which, you know, I get it. But yeah, it's a little too heavy handed. I think I would rather 
it, it's just I do it because I want to and I don't kill. That's that's fine. That's enough. The, right. the scene I'm a when um, it's my job. I'm good at it. Yeah, the scene yeah. after he's been um, betrayed. So in the car on, on the way from the successful heist, um, yeah, Michael Chiklis's character says like, "Well, I need all the money, so you're either in with us for this next job because he needs a million, doesn't need to do that, or you're not, and you're out, and it's going to be bad news for you." So uh, Parker ends up getting shot, doesn't he? And jumping out the window of the car and left for dead and shot again well yeah i can't work out if he does shoot him again or if he misses misses i think he misses because he's an incompetent boob they never really show it do they but um the latest scene once he's kind of escapes and stuff i'm jumping we could always go back if yeah we... when he's having the conversation with nick nolte about like uh, uh his character says like i'll pay you off like i'll pay you off and you can just disappear in my door so right yeah happy and barker's like nah it's the principle mate it's the principle i just didn't find that, that scene really worked because the, the... I don't know. Like I understand, he's the the principle is that he should get paid his dues for doing for doing the job, which really works in payback and really works in point blank. Right. Yeah, because there isn't any other avenue for getting the money. Right. Whereas here, the fact that Nazi could just give him that money and he could disappear and go be happy with his wife. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I just didn't feel like that 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 scene didn't work for me. I don't know how you felt about it. No, I agree. I it didn't make any sense, and it was like except to say it's a way for him to under like he knew parker was going to say no but like did he just do that for claire look like i tried because then yeah. later when claire's there stitching him up in jlo's kitchen yeah. and she's like i can't stop him so like it, that's the only payoff i could see for that is that her dad tried to keep you know he wants really claire to be safe he doesn't yeah. want he, he doesn't give a shit about parker i mean parker's going to do what parker does he wants claire to be safe and so that was his attempt to do it that's the only thing I could see so that it paid off later for Claire to be yeah, like, sure. and that's a very Robert Parker Spencer thing. And again, having not read the Parker books and to know what their relationship is like, but Robert Parker for years, once he invented Susan in like book three, that was it. That was the thing. They understood each other. There's a code. There's the thing that they do. And there's a way that you treat the people that you love. And there's, they have this like autonomy, right? right. Um, Susan and, and Spencer only live together in one book and it goes poorly. And that's it. And they're like, they share a dog. They love each other, but they can't live together because he doesn't want to tell her what she's doing. She doesn't want to have to tell him. Like, they want to be able to come and go. They want to make plans for each other. Yeah. And it almost feels like he's in Ohio when this starts, right? Yeah. And they they live in Florida because when he says go to Lake Okeechobee, which is in Florida, like he says go there. So that means they're close to there. So he's from Florida too. They go, well, he's from Florida. <laughs> Stephen's from Florida. Um, but they live in Florida. I believe that Nick Nolte lives in Florida. I believe I've seen people. I believe I've seen I mean, I've seen that guy around. <laughs> um, but but um, yeah, I, I, that's the only thing I can think of. I'm yeah. rationalizing it because it doesn't make any sense. No, I, th I think that is slightly fair. And I think it, in terms of the plot, I can see why that's there. But I just they needed to find a different angle for that. It needed to be it didn't need to be about money. It needed to be like for the benefit of Claire, just disappear for that. I can give you enough for now, like, but just to say that I can give you the exact amount of money that you would have got from this job yeah, anyway. Yeah. Why even do the job in the first place if you're that rich? I don't right, know. Exactly. It, it really bothered yeah. me. No, as it should. And at the end too, when he says to um, Leslie, he says, um, well, once we get, the, once we get the money and settle up 200,000 for me, which is what yeah. I was originally owed. And then the money to the other people for helping me out. And then you get, then we split the rest 50, 50. So even there, he wasn't going to say, we'll just split it 50, 50. And I'll take, he's <laughs> like, no, no, there's the principle to, and he says a couple of times, it's the principle. Yeah. And and the thing that I loved about payback is that the money, it's a lot less money than this. Yeah. It's, it's like, like $28,000 or something. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous amount, but that to me, that's the reason I love it is because you're a criminal. Yeah. Right. You could get that money tomorrow, but it's it's so to me the fact that the number is so small. It's that person, or as it turns out to be that outfit, owes correct that money. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I liked about that one best because that was such a unique way to to prove that point of of it being the principle of the thing. Yeah, well, I think that's why this one is more of a more of a revenge story, isn't it? Yeah, really, yeah. it's about him getting his revenge for them shooting him and leaving him for dead. Correct. Yeah, the but then is, I do. Yeah, and I do like the the fact that you know he helped. He gave money to those people who saved him. I mean, we assume he gives them the two hundred thousand dollars, right? That's the 
We see them at the end, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we assume that that's house and yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought that was a that was a nice touch too. But because yeah. that, but that also then leads into that it's just revenge. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I did yeah. think this scene when they attack him in the car was pretty pretty good though. It's one of the highlights of the movie, I think, because it. Oh yeah, that was well shot. It well longs done. it out, yeah. maybe for a bit too long, like from the oh this is the situation, and then it. But once it all kicks off within the car, the intimacy of the, the, the fight is, and it's pretty brutal. When this movie gets violent, it goes for it. It does. And this is the first scene. And um, I read, I don't know if you read the same thing, that Jason Statham insisted that he did the car jump out the window. <gasps> so that's really him. I had no idea. Yeah, and Taylor Hatfield was like, no way, you're not doing it. It's too much of a risk. And he's like, well, I am. And that's actually him jumping out the car window. But he doesn't, that's not really him landing on the road rolling. I assume so. Wow, that's amazing. Well, that's just dumb. Well, yeah, quite. It's not something you're going to get me doing, but um, I'm also no. being paid millions of dollars to act in the movie. Yeah, there's they, there's two, so the, that stunt and the stunt when he's hanging from the balcony later after the next big bloody brutal mm-hmm. fight. I really like, I think it's Daniel Bernhardt, that guy. He pops up in loads of stuff. And as I, that guy. As that guy. Always that yeah. guy. He's in John Wick, the first one. So yeah, he's in loads of stuff. He has a big brutal fight with Statham, doesn't he, in the hotel room, from the, like the hotel like lounge area to the bathroom to the balcony, and it ends up with them both hanging over the balcony. And yeah, I really Statham, like that. Statham yeah. really did that as well. Pulled his shoulder, supposedly, like hanging off there, and really? ripped all, ripped all his arm up. And he's, I, I like. It. I I really thought that was a great fight scene. I I really yeah. thought that was. I I, I think. Because it needed, because again, going back to who the big bads are, you knew he and Chickless were going to get in a fight because Chickless is the thing for a reason. He is, a, he is yeah. solid. Like he missed his calling as a professional wrestler, right? Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, he could, there, he's one, he's just too good of an act. I mean, that's acting. I'm not pretending professional, but it's like, you know, he's, you knew that was going to happen. You knew that they were going to have a fight and, and that was fine. And, and, and that's fine. But but no, I definitely think the hotel fight was really good, and I thought the the knife through the hand in slow motion. It uh, wasn't yeah. in slow motion, but it felt like it was slow motion. Yeah. It was really shot well. Yeah, 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 yeah. A no, lot of that blood guy. Is you're right. That guy. He's in Atomic Blonde. He's in Logan. He's in. Um, he was in one episode of Arrow. He was in um, one of the. He was in Hobbs and Shaw. He was in Birds of Prey. Yeah, he is that guy. He just pops up as that guy and everything. He he can do stunts. Yeah. He can do his own fighting. You know, and that really matters, I think. You know, and obviously with those guys, you want somebody who can do their own work. Yeah, you can. And he's in um have you ever watched Barry? I've not. The, with the um, uh, Bill Hader, Hader show. Yeah. Yeah. I I missed season four. I need to catch up with it at some point. But um it's a wonderful show. It's well worth watching. He's in a, the standout episode in season two, which is essentially a whole episode long fight. Nice. I want Barry that. and him. Him. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. amazing. It's essentially like a whole, it's like 20 whole minutes, almost nice. nonstop. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. He's in Nobody. Of course he is. He, well, yeah. He fights on the butt. He's one of the bus goons yeah. in Nobody. Like you which say, again he's... is clearly in the John Wick universe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Another another um, instance of him being that guy. That guy. Yeah. But he's <laughs> good at that guy. And I think it matters giving Stace somebody to fight. And that's why the bus yeah. the, the sh- the, in the truck scene, the fight in the truck scene works because none of them, ex- I mean, Chickless is a beast. I'm not pretending. And Wendell Pierce is a really great actor, but I mean, yeah. he's not, he's big, but he's not, he's going to lose in a fist fight. Yeah. He's not threatening in that he, way. Yeah, he's not it. threatening. Whereas like Chickless isn't going to catch Stace in the foot race, but if he gets hold of him. Yeah. You know, Bear you're, hug you're him worried. To death. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Bear hug him to death. He's going to, it's clapper in time. But the other two doofuses, they're not anything. They're like strung out guy and guy who's the nephew. There's no threat there. So the, the reason that the threat works in the car is because it's four on one and they're moving yeah. and there's a lot going on and the blood's everywhere. And it, it that could have easily been shot poorly. Yeah. But it wasn't. No, so geography is so important, isn't it? Knowing where people are and how that thing relates to that. And it can either be big in a big epic action scene or it can be intimate 
it, yeah. and it can be done badly by by directors. And here, yeah, I think it was, it felt intense. It felt dangerous. It felt like you didn't know what was going to happen at any moment, including where's Parker gets shot. You're like, fuck, actually, Jason Safe, yeah. you know he's going to yeah. get shot because it's the point of the movie. But yeah. it's like, whoa, actually, Jason Safe just got shot. What's going on? Yeah. Um, yeah, those two scenes, I think, are probably the, the standout highlight of the movie. But it's interesting because it's one about 20 minutes in and it's one about 70 minutes in, maybe. Yeah. In between that is a really long section of not a lot. This movie is brought to you by West Palm Beach yeah. Real Estate. West Palm Beach. Shit's expensive, even in 2013. It's a really saggy middle. It goes on uh, forever. And it's, and it's almost a two-hour movie. And if there was ever a 90-minute movie that needed yeah. to be 90 minutes, it's this one. Yeah. I mean, the start, the the books are all short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like... Let's get to it. Yeah, no, I agree. And it's just like, again, they needed to give Jennifer Lopez something to do. And yeah. so that's what she gets to have a meltdown, talk, hang out with Patty Lapone, which is cool. You see her life is bad. She's got bitchy people that she works with. We learn that she's smart. Bobby Cannavale hits on her. He definitely watches her ass, which again, so it's an interesting yeah. juxtaposition. It's a weird, and again, I don't know why he's in this movie. I don't know what he's doing here. Like, why is that him? That could be anybody. I mean, I'd argue what he's doing is harassing her. It's not Very okay much. what he's doing. Not at all. Yeah, it's really... Right, he's following her around. Yeah. And it's like, I know he sa- he saves the day because of whatever, but it's only because he's a stalker. Yeah, essentially, because yeah, he knows where she is at all times. Yeah, it's just a weird... It's, it is. It was just a way to give Jennifer Lopez something to do. Yeah. It, you're going to put her above the title. She better have something to do, but they really don't give her anything to do. It's a no, different well, that... It's two movies. Yeah, that's the trouble. They want to give us something. Yeah. She doesn't do anything. She's she is a real estate agent that doesn't help anybody buy any real estate. And Ever. No, <laughs> including in this movie. Um yeah, it's just yeah. it just seems to go on and on and on and on this middle section. I just thought like get to the point already. Like we get it. And even if it Steve like... gets a shag. Well, I think originally they were supposed to, but they wrote it out. No, no, he does with his wife, with Claire. Oh, he sure. Yeah. Off, oh, right? yeah. But I think originally he was supposed to get a shag with Jayla, but I think they decided against that, which was definitely because right it decision. Was, yeah, it's the right thing to do. It is not who the Parker ca- You can't uh, have this version, this Parker. You have this a principled guy, with, guy. And then be like, I'm going to bang the hot real estate agent. Yeah. No, that's not going to happen. And she tries. She is. It's she not does, for yeah. lack of trying on her part. And that goes back to the weird take your shirt off, take your dress off and spin around scene is he yeah. never touches her. No, no, no. He even says lift your hair. So it's a very weird thing because then later the Wendell scene at the end when he yes. says what he says to her, that was, we didn't need that. And I'm assuming, and you could hear him, the actor, because he's a very good actor. You could hear him hate that line. It's you such a hear, trope, like, isn't it? It's just yeah, it's it's, not necessary. You could hear him hate say that line like it's almost like when uh harrison ford's voiceover in and uh <laughs> blade runner is so bad he was hoping they wouldn't use it i almost feel like wendell was like if i say this line this poorly if i'm bad if i just quit acting they will have to cut the scene nope so gross uh, sadly not yeah and that whole like saggy middle section is about him finding out where they are and finding yeah. out what they're up to like that could have been done in 20 minutes it's so Drag. Less than twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah, not. That's, yeah. It's not intricate. It's like they've hired. Yeah. They've hired a, a. They've bought a place, which For was a million dollars. Hmm. Yeah, which was the point <laughs> of that heist was to get the million dollars because you can't rent in Palm Beach. Is the right? Well, you can't get off Palm Beach is an island. So the point was once you do the heist, they close the bridges. Right. Yeah. And so you have to have somewhere to be. Yeah. Where you can have a boat and leave later. So it's like. They're expecting some. No, they're not expecting someone to live there. So that was the whole point. Yeah. So that is really clever, and he sure. needs a real estate agent to help him figure it out in way less time. Yes, way less time, because then it's like a really, like, like again, like <laughs> to say this is like somewhat inspired by kind of Ocean's Eleven and that kind of thing. Like, yeah. There's no intricacy to the the plot. It's like we'll set up some, some a fake bomb and some smoke. And then we'll bash some glass and we'll walk out pretending to be like, there's no like this and that and cleverness. And so we're just, we're, we're, it's just too much of wibbling around and waffling around with no payoff at all. None. 
No, it's stupid. And that, well, except to get to the damsel in distress. And I know you wanted to talk about that. Like, so let's, let's get there. So we get back to the house. The thing happens. And again, that is the dumbest heist ever. Yeah. The, the, I'm sorry. The, if you have, if you're auctioning off $70 million, yeah. you have your own fire suppression system. You have fire, like none of that's true. Also, BT dubs. I don't know how you guys, if you guys don't do garages in your neck of the woods, but when you garage doors in America, yeah. at this in 2013, if you roll under them, they go back up. It stops it. Right. Yeah. 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 Sure. That makes sense. That's perfect. what happens. Because that's a sensor that reads us something in the way. Correct. Because yeah. of ch hashtag children getting crushed was a thing that happened in my childhood yeah. when electric, because when I was a kid, you opened the garage door yourself yeah, and got sure. out and yeah, lifted yeah. it up. Once they started making the automatic ones, children started children and pets started getting hurt. I'm sure it was probably more when pets got hurt than children that people acted because we're the worst. But those are a law. Yeah, sure. Makes sense. And you didn't – and so the fact that they go through all the intricacies of him bending the firing pins and those guns, but you didn't yeah. think like, I also have to figure out a way to make this garage – like he had to get in a different way. That just didn't work. So there was just like some dumb things or like, and, and those things always put me out of a movie. Yeah. Agreed. Like, yeah. Yeah. Fake. Yeah. And I, I'm okay. He, I believe the fight scene knowing yeah, that he's yeah, yeah. off the balcony. I'm here for that. And that he's a badass. I believe all of that, but like, you gotta, if you want me to believe that, then the garage door scene. Yeah. I mean, you go out of your way to show him stick the guns. <laughs> and like you even show the kind of cool putty that he puts on that will hold the gun there. Like you yeah. do that work, but then, you you undercut it by a, a forty minute driving around brought to you by the South Beach or you know Palm yeah. Beach uh, real estate community and you know that just just a fart of a. I a presume that's where a lot of the funding came from. Well, if you show off this area and this area and this area, we will. We'll let you shoot here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh man, yeah. And I just think that it falls apart in the end, right? It's a bad like the third act falls apart. It does. I think, I, I, yeah, I think it, it it just feels underwhelming, really, a little bit. So you're right, though. The scene when he, so he, when he realizes where they're staying, he goes back one night, doesn't he? Sneaks in. And that's a, like a fun idea. That's a good scene. It other is. Than, other, than it, the, yeah. other than the, the garage door pistol. Garage door. Yeah, I hear you. Um, but it sets us up for what we know is going to be the final scene. And it makes us think like, cool, there's going to be this co-action shim. He's going to be running around the house. He knows where these guns are. That never pays off. <laughs> we probably should explain that actually the, the Daniel Berthock carry, he's like an assassin who's been sent after him, isn't he? Because one of the guy on the Hardwick. Screen... Yeah. Hardwick is the nephew of a Chicago mobster. Yeah. So he goes after another, he goes after his cousin, doesn't he? Or something to find out. Mm -hmm. That they've gone to Florida, so we didn't really explain that, did we? That so that's how the the path has been laid, and that the assassin went after Claire actually, didn't he? And in another really cool scene, she had like an escape ladder. I loved that. She had like this escape ladder to climb down and get yeah. away, which felt very practical. I was like, yeah, of course she would have that. But yeah. it's like a little moment. This is I your thought, life. Yeah. Oh yeah, all right, that's cool. Yeah, that makes perfect <laughs> sense. Um, so all that's been going on, and we're building up to this big finish. The heist has happened. He knows they're there. He's going to let them go back, and then he's going to steal the jewels off them, even though he'd previously said stealing jewels is not a good idea because it's hard to fence them and make the money. But all right, I, I get it. And we think we're going to have this big, cool action scene. The one thing we I think. did, we think, what I did like was that he turned up injured because of the fight with um, Hardwick. Yeah, so I think yeah. that was a nice twist on a well-worn formula. Was yeah. that actually he has to overcome these injuries? He's got broken ribs, they say. He got stabbed in the hand, as you said, and many other contusions and bruises and stuff. So he's kind of wincing and limping his way around. I thought that was an interesting way to approach that scene. But then it just falls into like bog standard, boring tropes and doesn't, I'll say it again, pay off on all the things that it promised earlier at all. No. The one thing, I mean, the, the like, I do appreciate though, like you said, when he's trying to pick the lock to get in, but he's still dilute, he's out of it and he's doped up and he's he ate Patty LaBone soup. Yeah. And so, which I thought that was great. She's great. So anything she's in, it's always going to be good. But I just kind of loved the way that they were together. And he's like, can you make soup? She's like, you betcha. <laughs> um, I do love though that Jennifer, like there's a story there that Jennifer Lopez has a Jewish mom. Like I love 
Yeah. That. I love that story that's not happening there. I mean, casting her and it makes, it goes back to her, um, you know, to her, the way that Jennifer Lopez's character is, you know, she's, she's got scammed. She got divorced. She's living with her yeah. grumpy Jewish mom. I just think it's great. I just, I, I think Penny Lapone was good. And I think she had more chemistry with the state. <laughs> yeah. Arguably. Yeah. Yeah. Jennifer Lopez did. And I, I mean, she was, she and definitely the dog. wanted to, and the dog for sure. <laughs> oh, he likes you. I've got away with dogs. And so, so all of that to say, yeah, it's totally set up that he's beat up and he's exhausted. And so he couldn't pick the locks. So we had to break the glass, which again was, again, a good p- piece of writing because then they see it later. But then yeah. it's like, all they're all walking in the house. You're hiding with a loaded gun. Shoot them right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But we're going to wait for the fourth idiot to show up so he can catch Jennifer. Lo- he does now. He doesn't know that Leslie's outside. No. But that was just other than what which we're paying jennifer lopez to be in this movie so we got to do this we need and to it the throws finale, off yeah. the whole thing because but the final finale that they set us up for would have been a better finale than we got oh much better yeah yeah definitely it needed the whole point was we needed that earlier scene echoed now in that right. he he controls the situation yes and when he's in control this is what happens and it doesn't matter what condition he's in parker owns shit goes down but we don't get that because, as you said, like they had to make sure Jennifer Lopez took part. Although we may find out we're wrong when we read this book, and it turns out that this was in the book. I don't know, but um, I if it I, is, I, then I I'll be sad. Believe. Well, that's yeah. not the first book, so we won't know right away. No, yeah, I agree. It just feels, and again, if that is in the book, then this is it's an adaptation. You're allowed to change that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're allowed to to not make that happen. And again, I I like because it's it's such a weird juxtaposition too because his relationship with Claire. She's not a damsel in distress. She gets yeah. away. She she yeah. gets away. And when she takes that is such a great scene. She takes the she takes the uh, knife, and you're like, oh, she's gonna stab that fucker. And she runs, and you're like, oh. And then she fucking punches his tire. She's so yeah. smart. Yeah. Claire is so awesome. So if you're gonna have somebody to help you, Claire knows where. You, bring Claire. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So again, in, in the first draft of this script. Claire's there helping him the whole time in my mind or that's the maybe in the book like that's what I want I want I want Parker and Claire on a heist yeah on a revenge as opposed to Leslie Rogers yeah Yeah, (laughs) just because yeah Yeah, Yeah. I don't know it just doesn't work with her weird stalker cop friend yeah and she does get that one moment doesn't she she shoots um Uh, yeah Wendell Carlson is the yeah 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 which I understand, but also is another line that we're crossing where this real estate agent who is doing this because of all the terrible things that have happened to her in the background, which we understand. Like, if you can find this way to get a bit of money, she didn't realize it was going to turn out the way it did. But her crossing the line of outright murdering somebody yeah. and just being glib about it is needs to yeah, be addressed. She's fine. And, she's yeah. totally fine. There's no trauma. No. It's one of the at, at, at break. Did you ever see Breakdown? Have we talked yeah, about the, the Kurt Russell? Russell. Yeah, wonderful movie. The greatest ending of a traumatic movie ever, because you know why? They're fucked up. The the two of them sit there at the end. They've just murdered everybody. They're not. Yeah, yeah. They're not. This She's just fine. She's just going to go back to work, and he's like, you're going to take the money, you're going to put it in an air vent, and then this many months, and blah, blah, blah. And it's like 18 months later until she finally gets her money. But she's yeah. just going on with her life. She's like, I murdered a guy. Yeah. And granted, he's a creep, but she murdered yeah. him. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. She's right, fine. Yeah. She's fine with that. There's got to be some. I mean, I've never murdered anybody. I don't know about you, but nope. There's got to be I'm a some sort of <laughs> some sort of psychological after effect. I would imagine, no matter the instance of murder. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So I just think, yeah, it's just it was it was so. Tr- it set us up to be what it is an action movie. We know what we want, and again, there's yeah. a, there's a thing about doing the tropes, and then doing the tropes and like yeah the expendables is the point they're making like it's tropey it's and it's also it, it's deconstructing it while doing it deadpool is deconstructing it while uh-huh. doing it like uh-huh. you need a trope but it's like part of the problem with like you said we just get a bad that's your third act that's so yeah. dumb and then everybody's fine yeah but it, yeah I, I totally agree with you and it's also about you've you've even got to like lean in and own it or or reject it outright. And we said, like, totally, we have a striptease and a confessional scene. 
straight after one another. So you can't have both. And right. you can't have like the horrible EV rapey threat. Yeah. In a lighthearted knockabout. Wow. Like, yeah, yeah. So that there's just decisions made all over the shop which don't quite line up, I don't think. And this is another one where like in a different film, we wouldn't even think about this. Right. Because we've had right. the confessional scene, because we've had these moments of it trying to be something. Some have a bit of subtext to have a oh, bit well, of character kind of... development, then right. Then it makes oh, us question those things. Light, uh, right. And I know you don't want it to be like so heavy without any comedy. And that's what Patty Lapone and the dog are for. Yeah. But you, we, we get them. And yes. you're like, it just yeah. doesn't work. Like That's the movie. Like, I want that. I want to watch Patty Lapone and her dog more than I want this third act. You talked about leaning into it. Gunpowder milkshake. Like that third act. It's like, okay. Gonzo, watch this. Yeah, we're going to set you up, and this is a traditional like re- that's a revenge, right? That's yeah, a yeah, that's yeah. a, and then the third act are like we're just going to go cr- fucking crazy, and we've got these badass actresses, and this is going to be bananas, and there's going to be guns, and it's going to be stupid, and we're going to acknowledge it. It great. I'm here for that. I didn't overthink Gunpowder Milkshake. It didn't want me to over. It didn't no. want me to think at all. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it, it needs to uh, it needs to pick a lane to use a overused phrase, doesn't it? It does, and it didn't. It didn't, and, I, and it's too long. That's the thing. Do you think film film friend? Yeah, could have saved it in the ed- with what you have here. Could mm. you have saved it in the editing suite? I think so, but I think the problem is J Lo would not have been happy with that. Because it's, 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 it's her that's got it's her that's got to go, isn't it? And it's not because of her. It's because her character doesn't add anything, which is why I don't understand why she took the role. You could take out half an hour of her character and the film would be much better. And, you know, Payback has um, Maria Bello Mm. as like the... She's a way better actor. Well, yeah, true. Um, But she's she's the female lead of that character. Yeah. But it works. She's not in it much. But the story between them works and she's in it at certain junctures in the story and yeah. she's in it at the end. So yeah. which Claire could have done it. Yeah, absolutely. Again, you so got the Claire you can character, do that, but I think yeah. you're right. It's because it's J Lo, so we've got to use her. We've got to have as much J Lo screen time as possible. And it's affected the runtime of the movie and it's affected the I think the decisions they've made in plotting detrimentally, Agreed. sadly. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we I think we beat the shit out of it enough. Uh, I hope everybody is. It, is... <laughs> it's difficult though because because it, actually it's watchable. It's fun. It's not a bad movie at all. Mm. It's just yeah. when you when you start to break down the things that are wrong with it, they 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 are bad. Yeah, they are bad, aren't they? And I think probably now I feel I like it less having had this discussion than I did when I watched it because I think because it is like high because it is quite rumpy to that. You, you were right to use that word. Yeah, it when you're sort of be that. When yeah. you're sort of in it, you're like, oh, okay, I'll just, I'll just go with it. But when you start to analyze some of these decisions, yeah, they're problems, aren't they? They are. They are. Wah, wah. Yeah, you could have cut Bobby. Could have cut J Lo. Yeah, and and then you've got and everybody else is in it. I just take a little, a few things with Claire being the guy in the chair, and you're there. Yeah. And then we don't. But I want, and I know, friends, you can all hear. Jack's um, cold, but uh, I need your Statham's Texas accent. Oh man, I can't. I don't even know if I. I, I... He can't do it, so I don't know why. No, I it's so. <laughs> it's funny though that they picked Ecuador because Kyle's from Ecuador. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, he's he is one of, when they're like, "There's lots of gringos from Ecuador." I'm like, "There are." I know one of the whitest <laughs> people I know is from Ecuador. I know that that's true. Yeah. Um. Speaking of that, though, which was your favorite of the Stath? disguises of this at the start you get gray wig priest don't you and i was like what the that is a yeah. bad wig then you get like the mustache the handlebar trucker cap when he's on the run and yeah. then you get, yeah texan cowboy hat what was your what was your preferred well i think i think the handlebar trucker cap sets him up for the movie that he makes with <laughs> that's true. later this front, is, yeah. That's, that's, yeah that's so um, no, my favorite is obviously cowboy hat. It's so stupid and ridiculous yeah. because the accent goes with it. Or with the other ones, he just is talking. Well, he doesn't talk at all while he's trucker cat 
trucker no. type guy. He doesn't it's talk. Interesting, because yeah. he starts off the movie American, doesn't he? Yeah, sure he does. Well, yeah, American. But it's revealed <laughs> later on that even that was fake, because when he's... yeah. He slips when he's talking to JLo's Leslie character. And right. He, yeah. And into she's British. British. She's like, oh, yeah. a British ac- oh, a British yeah. accent now. Um, yeah. So that was quite an interesting decision, I think, to have him fake American at the start for him to yeah. be supposed to be British. But yeah, his Texan accent is um, broad. Is that fair? <laughs> broad. It's as I good got as my David cowboy Bor- hat on. I will boy. say. <laughs> David Boreanaz's Irish accent <laughs> and Jason Statham's Texas accent could get into the ring and f- duke it out. Sure. For, for crappiest accents. Yeah. But but I think, but see that, like you said, with the Pat, um, Patty LePone and the dog stuff, if they yeah. lent into that, that's where the comedy comes from. Correct. Yeah. And so it's there. It's you, you could, again, if you want to be a silly, fun action adventure comedy, it's there. Yeah. And then Statham plays the straight man. But you can't do the other stuff. No. Yeah, yeah. The attempts at social commentary about, you know, the rich and the poor and the divide. and the, yeah, It doesn't work. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't work. Yeah. Shame. Shame, shame, shame. Yep. Um, I think we've covered it off, haven't we? I'm not sure there's anything yeah. else. Yeah. That... Is it time for letterbox reviews? So we do, do, we do, do we our picks first? What do we do? No, let's do some letterbox, shall we? Yes, please. Then you can have the final word. Oh, I know my final words. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I have got my friend, actually, Matthew Rogers, my mate from film studies at uni. He says, Parker is over long, over familiar fare, a shrug of the shoulders of a film which wastes the talents of those involved. So much so that in one scene, it's as if Chickless is a life size string ball talking doll caricature of himself as he grunts generic bad guy lines towards our dull protagonist, Mr. Statham. I love that. There is a reason why one of my closest friends who <laughs> reviews films um, and I studied film for three years with hasn't appeared on this podcast yet. He's not a big Statham fan. Okay. Um, he's lined up for whoever comes next. He's very keen. You, you've yeah. met that, obviously. You met him yeah, on yeah. Fringe. Yeah. Um, Stath is not his bag. So Lovely he was like, guy, sure. I'll, I'll wait until you do your next star. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, he That's said, so uh, yeah, well he said, said, he finishes off by saying this routine is getting very tiresome. That's how he felt. Aww. I think in, in 2013 about Jason Statham, I, I imagine it's only increased in time. 10 years later. Yeah, I'm sure he's feeling great. <laughs> <laughs> Lou Shoemaker says, the thing that really bugs me about this movie is that Jason Statham was actually the perfect person to cast as Parker. The Hunter, Richard Stark's first Parker novel, opens with the following. When a fresh-faced guy in a Chevy offered him a lift, Parker told him to go to hell. <laughs> Who better to play a stone-faced arsehole than Statham? But the filmmaker unfortunately chose to make Parker into a generic badass with a heart of gold and structure the plot into a ho-hum heist film. Michael Schickless and Wendell Pierce are two of the least threatening baddies to face off against Statham, while Jennifer Lopez and Patty LuPone are way overqualified as a down on her lap real estate agent and her mum. One source of comedy in the movie is when Statham is called on to do a Texan accent. I have no idea why they didn't just rewrite it for him to say he's British. Because Statham's accent work here is truly horrendous. Just awful. It's halfway between his normal English accent and Yosemite Sam. Other than that, he's fine. Other than that, he's fine. Probably true, to be fair, isn't it? It's amazing. Uh, Lebedev says weirdly very enjoyable yeah it's a bit cheesy and yes it's two hours long but the action of violence never lets up the cast is pretty good and Jason Statham as usual is a fucking beast I think he took a nap (laughs) the action and violence didn't ever I know I think you took a nap and that's why you didn't notice fair you slept through the the real estate listings because nothing says action and violence like real estate listings (laughs) Last one, Marcus, previous guest of the show, says, quite simply, another passable Statham thriller. It's How many stars does he give it? For three. passables, three? Okay. It's not um, not that well received generally on Letterboxd, I will say. It's all very much like, very. You know, it's hard to find a, a particularly effusive 
review when you will do on most other things I mean, even things that probably are shitter than this you'll find somebody that says no oh yeah it's amazing here everyone kind but, of is like you know uh, but you know why because something that shit you yeah. can love yeah something that is really bad can trigger like one person can love something that's really bad like i like really bad things when they know they're bad as yeah. you know and i just sometimes like really bad things because there's a charm there because they're trying something and they yeah. failed but when you're deliberately trying to here's here's what i think cap there's some people with money and they're like we got 35 million dollars i'm gonna just reach into a bag and we're going to pull out names and then we're going to make a movie. They're like, I got five million for Steetham. And then in the three million bag, they've got J-Lo. And they're like, OK, well, Nick Nolte will do it for a nickel. And Bobby Cannavale owes me a favor. Movie. And then they decided what to do with it. And it was so paint by numbers and so yeah. crap. And they couldn't figure out what they wanted to do. Nobody took a risk. You talked about it being the safe air. Nobody took a risk with this movie. And they tried to do everything. And you talked about us like niche. We're a niche. Yeah. The stuff that we're doing, we like niche things. And sure, we, I mean, we talked about Buffy, which at the time was niche. Now it's ubiquitous. But when Buffy was out, it was on a network that nobody had heard of. Yeah, yeah. And it was niche. And it was a weird thing to do horror comedy. Nobody Now everybody's done it because of Buffy, right? And so, like, that's what we like. That's a risk. I'd rather, I mean, I love the original Buffy movie because it took a risk. Yeah, and it's yeah. objectively terrible, but when we reviewed it, I loved it. I put yeah. it in Asgard. It's not that. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, I love it for what it is. Um, this just pick, again, pick, decide what you want to do and do yeah. that. Yeah, and, yeah. and again, it's coming up. That one with uh, the one with Franco and I, you know, Franco's Franco, whatever. Mm. That I like that movie. I think that was a risk. States was like, I'm going to do this. Spy was a risk. Yeah. Hobbs and Shaw is not a risk. No. But Spy but, was. Yeah, Meg it's was, interesting. Meg yeah. was a risk. Yeah. Yeah. There, but there is a safe lane to pick where you can still make a decent movie. Sure. But this wasn't it. No. And, you know, I'm not sure if I've seen... A truly, you know, Taylor Hackford, I know, is quite a set. I was actually just going to bring him up. Filmmaker, he's, but he's it, he's got a wide range, but is he good in any of them? Is yeah, he that, just okay. And again, I'm not. I trying think to, he is he just okay. Ray, right? But that's okay. I don't think Ray is that good, if I'm honest. It's just Jamie Foxx is great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's true. So it elevates the movie. Dolores Claiborne too. That should be better than it is. With yeah. Je Jennifer Jason Lee and Kathy Bates, that should be better than it is. And you, you know, an officer, and a gentleman. I know it's famous for that scene, but is the rest of the movie that good? I, I don't know if I've seen uh, it. Actually, but that but... is the performances again. Yeah, it, it's the like, Devil's again, Advocate. You... Al Pacino. We all know. I don't goes, like Devil. I don't like Devil's Advocate. We know his <laughs> performances big as Al Pacino performances are, but yeah. So I don't think that's he a is... great point. Yeah. I don't think he's that good. I think Hack is about is about right for his <laughs> name, if I'm honest. Yeah, that's fair. Not, not to be too rude. <laughs> no, no, it's fair, and it's it's what it is. So, yeah. Um, Where are you was... falling? Do you remember? Do you remember the three categories? I do, I do, and I I went back and forth mm. because it's definitely not a classic, but it's. Sure. I don't think it can be for completists only because mm -hmm. there it, it is just mediocre enough. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So, Whoa. Put it on the poster. I don't. <laughs> mediocre enough. <laughs> so I have to say worth catching. Fair. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not. I, I, I know. I and mean, then we should on it. But again, there's like, there's. Again, I like what Matt said about Michael Chiklis. And again, but Chiklis gave it his all. I mean, people are giving it their all in this. It's just they're in a different movie yeah, than agreed. each other. Yeah. And again, editing suite could have been. So I would say I would. it's not completist only because that that is reserved for some shape. Yeah, that's reserved for Revolver and in the name of the king. Yeah, sure. And uh, the one with... Oh, uh, fucking hell, yeah. London. London. Uh, <laughs> it's so bad. I tried to wipe it from my memory. Yeah. A, that again was a risk. Here's the thing about London. It's terrible. Yeah. But it tried something. And again, I almost think if if you get rid of the weird sex bang, 
yeah. you know, just because they're like, let's get these hot people naked. Okay, great. But that doesn't fit this movie. I don't understand what we're doing. And you turned it into what it was trying to be, two dudes in a bathroom doing blow talk. And that's the movie that it should have been. So at least it tried something. Evans and Stace tried something in that movie. Yeah. Um, failed. But they <laughs> tried. You, yeah. know, you know what I mean? So like, even that is worse than this. It's way worse than this. But at least you tried and failed. Where this, again, so to me, it's it's worth catching just so that you could say, I did it. Yeah. Yeah. And Where and, do you yeah. put it? Yeah, I think it's worth catching. I think it's very, very middling. I think even amongst this kind of safe period we've been talking about, it's towards the bottom. Actually, safe, oh. safe was a, a much better movie than I remember. I really enjoyed that. It's not as good as Killer Elite or Blitz or Mechanic. No, or, or, Killer Elite is the is to me the best of that run. Or either of the Expendables. So actually, you know, it's it's way down towards the bottom of this period yeah. of his films, definitely. Yeah. And do you like the Expendables more than the Killer Elite? I think so, because the Expendables at least know what they are. I think Killer Elite had That's a similar true. problem of not being quite sure what it wanted to to do. Oh, sure. That's fair. I, I, I all right. I'll give you that. I liked I it. I, I, I liked it. Again I like a it bit. a lot. Yeah. But I didn't like it on this rewatch as much as I remembered liking it the first time. Mm. I safe flipped, and I thought safe. Yeah, it's fine. But I rewatched this time and was like, oh, actually, this is really quite good. Yeah. Nice. Well. So there we are. We did it again. Thanks for thanks thanks for this. I'm sorry, Blake, but thanks for letting me sit in yeah. your chair, my friend. Get better. Miss Miss Blake, but um, yeah, we had already been talking anyway about our Parker reading project. So yeah, so this is a perfect opportunity. Yeah. It worked out nicely in that way, and I'll get yeah. Blake will be back for those that like Blake to hear this. Yeah, yeah, everybody. He always has interesting him. things to say. He does. He would have had a lot to say about some of the bad acting decisions here and some of the just the bad the, the fake social commentary i'm sure uh, or yeah. commentary as you guys say um commentary, that's right yeah 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 why do we we over and we yeah whatever we are mumbly in america but then some things we over enunciate so what, what are you gonna do what are you look at this segue what are you gonna mumble and over enunciate your way through soon what have you got coming up this comes oh. on the 25th of december this comes Merry out Christmas, 20- everybody. Merry Christmas. Wow. What a turd you've <laughs> given them this year. Here's your coal in your stocking. Parker. Here's your Christmas um, turkey. Yeah. Well, um, let's see what is coming up. So I've got, uh, I did an ADHD cast with Jess. Um, so I did literature for li- literature for life. And um, she recommended a book to me and I recommended a book to her. And so we just wanted to talk about it. And then I was like, Ooh, but let's just do it as a double show. So it'll be out on Femon and here, that should be coming out soonish and, or depending on what, when it comes out on Femon, um, I just talked to, or will talk to Seth Singleton, friend and colleague, Seth Singleton. He is now an official comic book writer. And so I spoke to him and his producer, um, for Saturday originals, um, his magic caster series that they're doing. So they've got big plans for Seth. They're like starting as the comic books and they want to make it animated and do all kinds of cool oh, stuff. Amazing. So very cool. So that is done. And then coming up, coming up in the happy new year, your new year gift is me and spider Dan doing a double dip of mm-hmm. an indie comic called officer down, like a gonzo over the top, super violent um, comic book called officer down. And then the movie adaptation. So we're going to do both. Awesome. Happy New Year. And speaking of noir, we're sort of in that world. We will yeah. eventually get the final Sin City volume, won't we? We will, whenever <laughs> Heath and I can do. We've tried a few times, but our, you know, our, he works third shifts and lives two hours behind me. Yeah, fair enough. So that's been hard. We definitely want to do that. And he and I are talking about um, maybe doing a... Um, he wants to. He he's got a lot of good podcast ideas, and and um, one of the things was that he's the only other person I know who genuinely loved Legends of Tomorrow, the TV show. Mm -hmm. So we talked about maybe not, not, instead of doing it like season's greetings, but doing like um, episode by episode, like we would set up a time and like try to record like half an hour of each episode and then put them together like that. And then like, if we could meet and talk for an hour and do like two and Mm -hmm. then just put them in the can and then eventually get those out. But most importantly in the new year, um, you and I will finish up Deadwood. We will, yes. Goodbye, Deadwood. What about you? But hello, Justified. So, hello, Justified. So long, Deadwood. 
Hello, just fine. And again, it's I'm rewatching. I'm watching Lost for the first time, and so as you talked about before, all of the all of the Deadwood actors that show up, William Sanderson, <laughs> yeah. you magnificent bastard. He just showed up. I love to see him. But yeah, everybody from there just keeps showing up over here. Um. Anyway, so yeah, you and I will do. We'll finish. We'll finish that, and then we'll yeah. we'll go to Harlan. We will, and we'll get back onto our Ed and Sean. Yeah, well. and we've got Ed and Sean. Um, yeah, Criminal Volume One. So yeah, January it's going to be you and me, me and Spider Dan, me and Heath, and then um, uh, possibly a lecture. There will, there will definitely be a lecture that uh, talk that uh, the writer Reagan Penaluna gave to my class that I recorded and I'm putting out because it's like mm-hmm. really good. Everybody should hear it. So all kinds of weird shit. What about you? You've got man. I mean, after this, you've got redemption and then yeah. Furious Six. Are you doing Furious Six? I am doing. No, I'm not doing. I'm not doing. As we, I think it's Fast Six. I don't know if that's different in different. Okay, but Fast no, and but... Furious Six. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not doing that because he is uncredited. Oh, so then you go so... right to Homefront. So go right to home front. So cousin, um, yeah, Far Six. He's just in that cameo role. At I mean, spoilers for Far Six. I've never seen it from so ten years know. ago. Yeah. yeah, it's literally a cameo role to set him up for the next movie. Got it. Okay. But it doesn't. It goes down as uncredited on his IMDb. So I'm not doing any of the uncredited movies. Nice. Okay. That's where it's on his official list. So no. So it'll be straight into yeah. Straight so into it's home redemption. Front. Then home front. Who's redemption? Who's your guest for redemption? Uh, Math is joining me for redemption, and then Glenn is coming back for home front. Wow, nice! And then, yeah. then back to Max for Expendables three. Then back to Max for Expendables three. Dude, what a what a January! Keep that train going. Wow, I mean, honestly, and then Wild Card with Spider Dad. Yes, that's right. Ah, oh, I can't wait. I love. And then I'm assuming Rhea is with Spy. Rhea, and I think Blake's coming jumping in for Spy as well. So yeah, nice. that'll be wow. The first time for quite the... a while that I've yeah I have two that's... guests on. Since she yeah, and Connor, the, I think. Yeah, yeah. No. And who's do who is doing the Furious movies with you? I have I haven't got my my Furious franchise name pegged down yet. I think Chris Phelps, if you could get him. Yeah. Doesn't he like those movies? He does. He does. I should try and pin him down. Yeah. Because I know he's already seen them all, so it wouldn't be a a long walk. And I I don't know who else. I've not seen any of them, so no. I can't help. I mean, I would if you needed me. You know. I know you would, of course. I would do it. I would be there if you need me. And that because that would give me that wouldn't be till February. I'd have plenty of time. Yeah. I'm sure they're all streaming somewhere that I could watch. Oh, them, of course so. they are. Yeah. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. All right. Brilliant, anyway, mate. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for listening and partaking with me with me in this journey through the Safe Filmography. I've been I'm Jack's Musings, and that's J A C S. And you can find me on X where I'm most active. You can also contact the show directly on X under the name Back to the Filmog. Make sure you use the hashtag follow the filmography. I'm also a proud member of the Comics Emotion family, a super place for the world's greatest people, dedicated to bringing you podcasts on a variety of geeky topics. So please make sure you take the time to search, subscribe, and rate our shows whenever and wherever you listen. Until next time, be excellent to each other and make sure you take the time to treat yourself too. I am Jack signing off. Yippee Kaye, movie lovers.